Hey everyone, it's Vinny, and welcome back to Best Bets. Last weekend was just rough overall. Uh, Saturday, they took everything off the turf and moved everything to the Tapita track. Uh, Crimson Advocate was a scratch. The Chad Brown, Chad Brown runner that I like. Through the jockey on Sunday, Candyman Rocket just didn't move at all, which was surprising. Just a tough weekend. Just look... <laughs> Flip into the next page there. Uh, yeah, uh, look at least this weekend for the Florida Derby. Weather looks a lot better. Fingers crossed that it stays that way and they don't move everything to the Tapita track. So with that said, let's try this again. <laughs> Race number two on the Florida Derby undercard is a mile and an eighth actually on the Tapita track. I do like the Tapita track. I... Uh, I just like knowing that the races are going to be on it while handicapping rather than tur than them being on turf and then moving. You have to look at them differently. It is not an equivalent surface, in my opinion. Some horses prefer it. Some horses don't. And in race number two here, a horse that I think really prefers this track is the number seven Sand Dancer, who's morning lined here at 12 to 1. I don't know if we're actually going to get 12 to 1 on this horse. I'm hoping we at least get double digits, though. Uh, he's stretching out, uh, after running a little over a mile in his last two, but he's won three in a row and three races back. He did win on this track going this mile and an eighth distance. He's five for nine here at Gulfstream. He really likes this, uh, this Tapita track, in my opinion. It is a little bit of a class jump for him today, but I don't think it's a big one at all that justifies him being this much higher than some of the others in here on the morning line. Uh, and in lower races like this, this is a starter handicap race. In lower level races like this, I like seeing horses that actually know how to win. He's three for four in 2024 so far this year. He's the only horse in the field who has multiple wins this year. I, uh, I just think he fit. I think he fits very well. Uh, he's got tactical speed. He should be able to sit right, right off the, the length of two off the pace, and he really likes this track. So I don't think there's any any issues here uh taking a swing with a horse like this especially if we do get every bit of this 12 to 1 on the morning line i realistically i feel like he's going to be bet down to like 6 8 to 1 uh but still it should be a good price and i think he's a very logical horse in this spot i'm going to play the number 7 sand dancer to win race number 9 on the florida derby day undercard is the sir shackleton stakes going seven furlongs for four-year-olds and up. And there's a lot of speed signed on in here, in my opinion. So I land on the number two implementation uh, with Irad Ortiz riding as my top pick. He's second choice on the morning line. Uh, first choice is long-range toddy, which I think is a little bit crazy. But with all the speed in here, I think implementation gets a great trip. Uh, I like the jockey change to Irad. Uh, he finished third last time out, the heavily favored Kings Barnes, uh, who would be a monster favorite in here again today. Uh, and he also finished third. Uh, he just missed second behind uh, Vivir Colin Allegra, the number one in here, who I think is the speed of the speed. But I don't know if he's going to have as easy time getting loose as he did last time out, which is why I think a horse like Implementation can turn the tables on him today. I am going to play a win ticket, and I'm also going to play an exact. Uh, I am going to key implementation uh, over the number one, Vivir Con Allegra. And I'm also going to use the number five, Shaq Diesel, in the exact as well. Again, I do think there's a good amount of speed here. Shaq Diesel, he likes the, he a little bit pace dependent. He does only sit a few lengths back of the pace, but he really likes a target to run at. Um, and with the speed in here, I think the speed will at least start to come back. I think Shaq Diesel could could run a big race. Uh, he's six to one on the morning line. I think we get every bit of that. I can't see him being bet down too too much. Uh, and I think he will add value to the exacta. But I do think the number two implementation just gets a great trip with Irad here. Uh, and as long as none of the speed horses just shake loose early and are left alone on the lead, I do think these off-the-pace horses will come late. Looking at Sunday's card, race number six is an allowance optional claimer going a mile and a 16th on the turf. 
and it is the return of the number four Farbridge, who last year was with Todd. This year is with Christophe Clement. Uh, not a bad change. Clement's fantastic with these uh, with these turf runners. If he improves off that three year old form, or even really runs back to it, he is much the one to beat here. He was very good last year. A couple very tough trips that got him beat in some big spots, but. If he runs like he did last year, he's going to be very tough here. If I'm hoping he's around 9-5, to five, I'm hoping he doesn't get bet down much more than that. Um, if he does, I will play an exacta with him rather than a win ticket. Um, in that exacta, I'm going to key him over the number one dreams of tomorrow for Shug McGahee with Rosario riding. Really not the most consistent of horses, but he's got races that can he can definitely hit the board against this field. And I think his 2024 debut was actually a lot better than it looks on paper. He got stuck on the inside, and I know he draws the number one again today. But he gets Rosario today, who is not going. usually does not try to split, split horses late. I imagine Rosario is just going to take him back and make one big wide move late. So I think he can definitely pass some runners in the stretch at, a, at what should be a big price. The other horse I am going to key underneath Firebridge is the number three lucky score from Mark Cassie. Uh, but he's just run in tougher spots uh, than most of this field has run against. And he's run fairly well. Uh, he's dropping out of graded stakes company for uh, his 2024 debut. I'd be surprised if he ran bad against this field uh, for Cassie. So I, I think there's a shot that they go one that Firebridge and lucky score go one, two. So I will play it like that. Uh, and I will use the number one, Dreams of Tomorrow, just to add some value, because I do think Dreams of Tomorrow does have races that put him in the mix here. Race number 11 is a maiden special weight going one mile on the turf. And my top pick here, I'm going back to uh, I'm going back to her, is the number 10, Pendulum. Was my top pick last time out here on Best Bets. Ran a very good second with a big improvement off that uh, uh, from going from two to three. I'm expecting another improvement today, and I think this is a bit weaker of a field than she faced last time. I think she's going to be the one to be. I'm expecting her to probably be around 3-1 to one on the morning line and go off somewhere around that 2-1 to one range, which is fine with me. I will play her to win. I'm also going to play an exacto with her. Uh, I'm going to use the number three uh, parade for Todd Pletcher. Uh, first time starter. I really like the pedigree here and Irad's riding. Uh, workouts have been solid. Uh, should add value in the exacta in one of those here for Todd that always has a chance to run well first time out. So using that, using the number three in the exacta. The other runner I'm going to use in the exacta is the number seven exhilarate for Bill Mott. Uh, the daughter, of gra the grade one winner of late was really not good in two starts on the dirt as a two-year-old. Mott's been slowly working her back, getting ready for the three-year-old debut. In the last two works, including the last work on the turf, I, it seems like she turned a corner uh, just much better visibly than any of her other works, even when she was two. Uh, easily her best two works of her career. So Mott may have found something out here that this one really wants to be on the turf rather than the dirt. The pedigree, uh, I do think, is a little more dirtish, but would not surprise me. Uh, the Medallia Doros do run well on the turf. Uh, so it would not surprise me if she just prefers turf. I think she'll be a big price, too. She did no running at two, and I know people will play her because she's the daughter of a late, but... I think because of those two starts, she's going to go off at a good price here, uh, and she'll add value to that exacta. So I am going to go use the number ten pendulum to win, and then I'm going to play an exacta with the uh, three with the three seven ten. And I think that exacta, if it hits, will probably pay well over fifteen to one, uh, depending on the order. So best of luck if you are playing Gulfstream Park this weekend. Uh, I know the dudes are going to have their Florida Derby betting Bible uh, for this weekend. My top four selections for all the races on Florida Derby Day at Gulfstream, along with my top four for the Arkansas Derby and the UAE Derby, are going to be in there. Uh, last weekend at Fairgrounds, uh, the dudes did great. My top fours also did very, very good. I hit the late pick five. 
just using my top two choices all the uh, in the last five races, and that paid like thirteen hundred dollars. Did very good, uh, very good with that. So if you haven't already checked out these betting bibles, check them out. They've been very, very good as of late, uh, and definitely helping uh, increase the bankroll heading into the Kentucky Derby and the summer. Uh, for me, that's Saratoga. So I always like to have a big bankroll for Saratoga. Best of luck here playing Gulfstream this weekend. I will see you next time.